Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hi. Mrs. Farmer, when did you get here? Just a minute ago. You know what? It's deer season. Yes, it is. Now, what does that mean? You gotta get up super early. You gotta mm -hmm. get up way before daylight. Yes, you do. You gotta get all your stuff around, yes, you make do. sure everything's right. And you know what? what's really weird, and I don't understand this, is I'm not a breakfast person. Mm -hmm. So I really don't eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. But what's really funny, if I get up super early, I'm starving. Yeah. Explain that. I'm starving every morning, so I don't know. So the other morning we were up and you said, try these. And you know what, it was really good. It was like, everything was there. Yeah, salt, sugar, everything sweet. The salt, the sugar, the, I mean, it's, it tasted kind of like a pancake, kind of like a waffle, mm -hmm. and the, the bacon was in it, the sausage was in it, and it was like, hey. It's every, everything this breakfast. This is really good. <laughs> so, I was trying to think of a really good name for this, and what okay. I thought it would probably be is, early morning getting up for breakfast, deer hunting, breakfast stuff. Yeah, with maple syrup and sausage. And stuff. Yeah, and stuff. That's a good That's a perfect name. That is a good name. It'll take up half a page. <laughs> All right, so anyway, what it is is just like a, a breakfast. Muffin. Muffin mm -hmm. with. It's got sausage it's in got it. It's got sausage, it's got the syrup, it's got everything. Yeah. Let's get this started, right. from. We got a hot skillet going here. And what I, I got some sausage here. And what All I'm right. gonna do, we want this tiny, because this is going in a muffin. So I get my handy dandy scissors here. Thank you, Tracy. I love those, yeah, they're the best scissors in the world. I don't know what I'd do without these. So the secret to this is, you're, you're making this breakfast muffin. That's right. And it's got the syrup taste. It's got the, and I like a breakfast sausage. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of breakfast sausage, and speaking of deer season, right? I took my dough in. You did. Yes, I will show you a picture of my mature dough. Now I love to take does, mm -hmm. and in zone one, that's in the areas where there are a lot of deer. You can take three does and a buck this year. Wow. And then after that, after you get your buck, you can buy extra tags and keep on taking them. That means that there's a bunch of does in zone one counties. Right. So I've got one. I don't know how many I'm gonna take it. I'm just, I'm enjoying hunting mm -hmm. and just being able to sit there and kind of watch them come and go and do as I please. Okay. Well, it's, it's kind of fun. Now I'm gonna add a little bacon to this too, because I'm gonna, right. we need a little bacon grease for this. That's gives it a good taste. We're gonna get that little too. We want all these to be little so they can just disappear in the muffin. Now, when you're on the run and when you're busy, when you don't have much time, it's nice to have like everything together. Right. So this is like a complete breakfast thought. Yeah, it is. Now you say you wanted some grease here, I right? I do, I want the grease, yes. All right. well, there's your... I'm just gonna take these out. Ingredients. One stop breakfast shopping. That's right. Now did you put the syrup in it or on it or both? Both. Okay. We put it in and on. Because you know, when it's cold out, you burn a lot of calories and you crave, you crave carbs. Yeah. It's, try, it's tough to stay away from the Oreos and Doritos this time of year. Yes, it is. It really is. All right, what's next? Now I've melted some butter in the stove. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna grab that. How much that. butter? I actually have about half a, probably half a stick of butter because I'm right. gonna use it for a couple things. So we're gonna keep this grease and I'm gonna add probably like, let's add three tablespoons back. All right, now we have a little bit of that bacon grease and the sausage grease. Then we're gonna take this lodge pan. I'm gonna just put a little bit in the bottom of this because mm -hmm. it's good for I you. Let's see where you're going. It's good for you. Butter and bacon grease. That's right. It's going to be the base to our muffins. Our grandparents wouldn't have lived three days without butter and bacon grease. For the <laughs> That's right. And lard. Now we're going to take a little bit of this. All right. A little bit in each of the bottoms. I remember that. It had it on the on bottom. On the bottom. But we're going to keep a little bit to mix in it also. And I do have the oven at 425. It's already preheated. Now we're going to make a batter. Gotcha. And what I have is I took some flour. I have half a cup of flour here. All right. And I'm going to add about half a teaspoon of salt. Like about a half teaspoon. That looks exactly. All right. Perfect. Now I have a third cup of whipping cream, and it's I've been letting it sit out kind of to room temperature. You don't want it real mm -hmm. cold. So we're going to add that. You can't go wrong with whipping cream. We've got two eggs. Yeah, this is a whole breakfast right here. It is. I like it. This would not be something I would do every day, but when I know I'm going to be cold, I'm on a run. <laughs> Man, That's right. Good. Now your maple syrup you made, yeah. the best ever. We're going to do a quarter cup of that. Do you notice how that's not like the store-bought stuff? It's, it's fairly runny. Yeah. And that's indicative of maple syrup. Real maple syrup. No corn syrup or anything like that. What are the ingredients in pure maple syrup? Maple syrup. That's it. That's right. It's the sap from a maple tree that's reduced down and reduced down and reduced down. Here's a little clip of what we did last year. And, you know, you figure 40 gallons equals just a little bit. Oh, yeah. 40 gallons to one gallon, supposedly. All right. All right. Now we have our wet mixture. Now right. I'm going to slowly fold in our dry. And that was just the flour and the, the salt. Now, I was up in, in the 
woods today, watching deer. They didn't stir the first day, it was really cold, and we love our venison. We haven't had venison in a while because we've been raising pigs and gals and sheep. But you can also make your own. I like brats. You do, don't you? And you I, don't, I don't cure them per se, no pink salt. Why is that? Because I'm gonna freeze them. I'm right. not gonna leave them laying in the refrigerator for six months. All right, looks like pancake batter almost, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Okay, now we just have a little bit of our sausage and bacon left. We're gonna... And if you wanted to, you could, well, you could go heavier on the meat, couldn't you? Yeah, you could. Or when I made them the other day, I just made bean on the bottom. This time I'm gonna fold a little bit in there mm -hmm. with it. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and fill these up. All right, it's looking pretty good. I don't want them all the way to the top because they're gonna grow a little bit. All right, mm. let's pop those in for 15 minutes and see what we get. I'm ready. All right, now, this is, this is something that, that we do a lot. Mm -hmm. People say, I don't like Brussels sprouts. But then you go to that one steakhouse where they have a little burn on them and they right. taste bacon. Delicious. And it's like, whoa. And you know, let's just make them. Yeah. Let's just cut some bacon up. Get your little scissors out. Right, we got to have our scissors. We got to go in hot here. So you want little tiny pieces again, right? So what we want to do is start with our bacon. You know, we started our cast iron page and there's a lady on there from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And I saw her doing this, a recipe kind of like this in a skillet in a pizza oven. I believe it's a pizza oven. All right, now, as I'm moving along here, I'm gonna slide that over. Ooh. It's all about timing. You want these to come together at about the same time. Cooking them in that grease would be yummy. Got some onions in here going. So we're gonna continue this till our onions are nice. Look at our bacon over here getting looks all so beautiful. Good. Yeah, that's coming together nicely. It looks good. Now, do you care if I pull my stuff out and I'm gonna pull a little butter? Do I get to eat it? Not yet. I'm gonna pull a little butter on top. We're gonna make it a little browner. I mean, look how amazing those look. Oh, wow. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter on each one. We need a little more butter. Yum. I melt it. Then we're gonna let these brown up and they should be done hopefully in about five minutes. I'm gonna pop those back in. All right, what's our next step? We poured a little bit of that grease off, but we retained some of that. Mm -hmm. Our Brussels sprouts. Oh, they're gonna taste so good. These are organic. <laughs> they have not been sprayed, Yum. pesticide. He made this the other night and it was so good. So we're gonna turn those over. Just let these get started here. They look good. jump around. I think my stuff's ready. Can I pull it out? You can pull it out. And you want me to change the oven to 375. 375. Okay. It should be preheated. Yum. What do you think? Oh wow. <laughs> we'll have something to eat while we're waiting for oh, the Brussels. Wow. Those look delish. So I'm gonna take a little bit of almonds. Slivered. Yum. We're gonna take our water chestnuts. You know what else we need? Just a little bit of pepper. Pepper? A little bit of pepper. We got salt from the bacon. Mm -hmm. So if you'll open that oven for me. I will. All right, I remember this from the other day. You ready? I, oh yeah, I'm way ready. Sometimes I like breakfast at night. You know, come think of it, I haven't eaten in a long time. They're coming out nice Yeah. because you Buttered it up. <laughs> so much grease and we had stuff. Grease. How could it be? All right, here's, All right, no. here's our syrup. What's Secret. the ingredients to 100% maple syrup? 100%. Sap. There you go. Maple tree sap. Look at that. How can you look go at that? Look at that, look at that. That's a whole breakfast right there. <laughs> Salt wow. and sweet, I like it too. It's, it's, good, man. it's almost like a piece of French mm. toast, isn't mm. it? Mm. Beautiful, wonderful. When you need to get up, when you need to get on the road. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Now, because we're getting asked, when people ask, we respond. People ask me, how can I make my own? People like to make brats and things like right. that. You can do that. Now, Christmas time's coming. If they don't have a meat processor or grinder, you need That's to go it. to your local sporting goods store. That's somewhere a good gift. They probably even got them at Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Get your loved one, be he or she, and bring them on these home. They're fun to play yeah, with. Yeah, they are fun. We're gonna make our own brats out of venison and other sort of meat. Look at that nice, wonderful meat. We've got that chunked up. We're gonna grind that. Now, as you know, as you look at that, there's no fat in that. So we have to have some pork fat okay. and some pork meat to grind up in that. The first thing you need, obviously, is a sausage casing. Right. Now you can use the collagen ones, or you can use a real live hog casing. You know what it's made out of? I don't wanna know. P. 
pig intestines. I smelt the bag, it wasn't nice. Well, when you open a bag of hog cases, don't expect for there to be a friendly bacony smell. It didn't smell good. It smells more like chitlins. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you want to do, they're, they're packed in salt. Now you can get these lots of different places, sporting goods stores. You want to pull those out, and here's let's just, let's just what they look like. It takes two hands to get them out of the bag. Yeah. In their dry form, they look almost like like an, an onion ring, a really stinky Taste onion one. ring. No, I'm good. <laughs> now the first thing you do is take those out of the packages and rinse them off under the sink in cold water. Right. And then put them out and, and let them set in warm water. Then what we're going to do is, if you will, they're kind of folded up on themselves, so you want to loosen the top up until you can find the opening. All right, now we're just going to take this little, this is actually the smaller funnel for this that where the meat comes out of. Put the end over that, and we're going to run water all the way through. Let's keep lifting that up, and it'll go all the way through there, and that gets the rest of that salt out. We'll flush that system out, get all that excess salt out. Then, because we're going to take a little bit of olive oil, so that will fit over there. Now we're going to take this, put it directly over top of this. Keep Always keep the center of this like so. So if we see the center mass going to left or right, we go the opposite way with the other one. Now think, this meat's going to be coming out into this. So the meat will flow right out into this. We've got a couple pounds of meat, about a pound and a half of pork and a pound and a half of ground venison. We've already got those ground up. One thing you do want to do when it comes to wild game or pork, pork I think is around 150 now, they're saying. Wild game, probably 160. Mm -hmm. All right, now if, I, if you will, just go ahead and tie that off right fairly close. Okay. All right, so I like to try things and really check my spices. Right. And I've adjusted this about a million times and I've got it about where I like it. Delicious. Now, I tell you what, the caraway seed has such a distinct flavor. It really makes it the does. brats to me. And everything else you add is kind of what you may or may not like. But this has got a nice round flavor. It was good. It was really good. Really good. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a half a teaspoon of black pepper, okay. half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, half a teaspoon of sage, and we're going to come in with a teaspoon of allspice, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, Let's go ahead and do a teaspoon of sugar, a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of marjoram, which, wow. according to some folks, that was one of the secret ingredients that the colonel used in his chicken. Really? Yep. Okay, now I've ground up some of that caraway seed just to kind of release some of the flavor, and we're going to go about a teaspoon of that. I really think, think that adds... You think about a teaspoon? I doubt it. Mm -hmm. We're going to go... Well, it's close, isn't it? And I'm going to take some dried milk, kind of a bonding agent. I'd say there's probably a tablespoon there. And now, that's our spices ready to roll. What it do you smells think? good. All right. We're loaded over here. Let's take probably a quarter of a cup of onions. Okay. And let's cut those up really fine. Go ahead and toss those in, if sure, you will. Sure, I'm mixing. All right. Now, as you mix, I'm going to start adding the spices. You can use any kind of beer you want. This is uh, Killian's Red. It's, got, it's kind of a little darker, and it's got a sweet taste to it. It smells good. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to start. Let me good. smell it. it. Smells yummy already. Wow. See that beer and the spices? Boy, don't they smell good. Now, we're going to watch this coming out, and we're going to kind of, you can control the flow here, and you can control the flow up here. I may tell you to slow down a little All bit, right. and I'm going to kind of push it up so it comes out uniformly, and then when it comes out and I get it as long as I want it, I'm going to do a twist on it. I'm going to lay it down, and the next one's going to come out. Right. I'm going to do a twist on it. I'll try my best. All right. Go ahead. And let's it? go ahead. And, now watch. You'll see the air pushing through. See there? I mean, it's in good shape. All right. Are we ready? Ready. This is fun. <laughs> Here we go. I practice one kibalsa because I know it's coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, these are not uh, your store-bought perfectly shaped, but oh my goodness, you put them on the grill. These are still tied together. We'll cut those apart. That's okay. going to be, of course, my kibalsa will be even longer than that, <laughs> but that is precious. 
Oh, my mouth was watering because I'm smelling this wonderful stuff. I'm going to go build a fire. All right. Can I touch your face? I'd rather you not. All right. We'll be right back. Look. Just look. They look perfect. They look good. You did good. You know what? This is, you know, nothing from the store. You know, it's our pig. It's our deer. Right. It's not necessarily our hog casings. I don't know whose they were, but they should have cleaned them up a little bit better. Yeah, they should have. They have a little smell to them. But we did clean them out, and there they go. I'm Look amazed. I'm amazed by how they hold. Does that? I'm just... It's a nice romantic mm -hmm. evening. Yes, it is. Listen to the to the Katie dids and yeah. the different assorted fall creatures. That is. It's very romantic. All right, I'm gonna put these on. I'm not crying from the smoke, I'm crying from happiness. From happiness? It's my happiness. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Those are good. That's delicious. That's not like a normal broth. That's just wonderful. We know mm. where the deer meat came from. This is way more lean than your average broth. I can't even describe how good but it is. But the taste, you taste that caramel? Yeah, it's just really good. If you don't have venison, you can use beef, you can use pork, you can use whatever you want. If you do have venison, you're a lucky, lucky person. Thank you, the best I've ever had. Mm. What's this remind you of? Jim Chimney, Jim Chimney. I like this song. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke. Sorry. That's right. Good luck will rubs up when I shake <laughs> arms with you. <laughs> All right, you know what? What? We got a chimney. Yes, we do. And you know how long it's been since I've cleaned it out? It's been a long time, isn't it? Ten years. Now, that's bad. That's wow. not good at all. And I had a young fellow over here, and he cleaned my chimney last time, which was a long time ago. And he took a look at it, and he kind of gave me a shame. You're in shamey. trouble. And now I'm on a list where he calls me because I forget about that right. kind of stuff. So he came in. He's going to tell you a little bit about the science of burning wood. This is... Very important, it's this time of year, he's gonna talk about what kind of woods to burn, not to burn. So here is a professional, mm -hmm. Mr. John Bow. All right, it's a chilly morning, but I've got my firewood cut and I'm ready to go. I haven't had my chimney clean for 10 years, but it ain't no big deal. I'm gonna start me a fire because it's cold out. I'm going to the house right now. All right, you can do that, but that might not be the only fire you start. <laughs> hmm. What do you mean? Well, 10 years is a long time. 10 years is a long time. This yeah. is John Bow. He's a chimney sweep. Hey, Tim. Chimney, chimney, Good to see you. <laughs> You've got a cool job. I, I don't care. I, yeah. I, I yeah, love, it is. I love it is. the guy who's, who's out there doing stuff because he thought about it. There's mm -hmm. a niche for it, a niche, however you mm -hmm. want to say it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Plain and simple. Yeah. But. When you know somebody who has had a chimney fire, it starts in the chimney, and then the rest of their house piles down around it, it makes you start thinking. It made me start thinking, I better call John, because time right. gets away. And I, I asked you, how long has it been since you've been here? You said, yeah, it's been almost a decade. That's bad. I'm That's a bad, bad You're a bad boy. You're a bad boy. All right, let's talk specifics here. What happens when you burn a lot of wood? Well, when you burn a lot of wood, it's according to how you burn it. Now, if you're burning it in your open fireplace, because of the inefficiencies of the open fireplace, you have a risk of a chimney fire, but you don't have as much of a risk of a chimney fire as you would, say, a wood stove. And the principle behind it is you're generating basically the same amount of heat, but so much of it is going up the chimney that it keeps the chimney kind of flushed out. It keeps it hot, keeps everything in a gas. You've got to remember that soot is actually smoke. It's just condensated. Mm -hmm. So. If you put more temperatures into the, the flue, then it's going to blow out the top. And then you have to have them looked at maybe every two years or so and have them cleaned maybe that often, maybe not. But in the case of a wood stove like what you've got, you're actually keeping anywhere from 50 to 80 percent of the heat downstairs. Now you're running the flue much, much cooler. Mm -hmm. When you do that, if you think of smoke kind of like steam, it's going to condensate and it condensates inside the chimney. All right, now, if you start burning bad wood. Okay. What's bad wood? Okay, bad wood can be either a type of wood or a condition of wood. Now, in the case of a type of wood, you're really basically wanting to burn oak, hickory, ash, locust, walnut, cherry, those, those sort of things, anything that you want a nice piece of furniture made out of. Right. You want it to be cut and split at least six months because it can be good wood in a bad condition. 
Uh, you want to stay away from pines, poplars, cedars. Those types of things grow too quickly or have resins in them. And no matter how you burn it, it's going to leave a resin inside the chimney that can reburn. So over time, regardless mm -hmm. if you're burning good wood or bad wood, you're going to get some buildup. Exactly. And what happens, worst case scenario? Well, you build up, uh, soot is actually a hydrocarbon. And the hydrocarbon is, is unlike carbon, it, it actually can reburn. It is a fuel source in and of itself. And so if you do something like have a, a large amount of it in there and make the mistake of putting your Christmas wrappings in the stove or start your fires with newspapers or something like that, those things can flutter up and be the ignition point for chimney fires. If you throw in some pine and it starts popping, that can possibly do it. Uh, but basically what you want to do is you want to be sure that you don't have enough fuel for an extensive fire. Wood being, burning wood is like no other different system. You still want to have things checked out. If you have your uh, gas furnace checked out on occasions, if you have your electric furnace checked out and changing the filters, wood is a very good source of heat. It's a heat like no other. It really gets to the gets bone. Gets in your bone, oh, exactly. You can and I back need up. that, trust yeah. me. Yeah, you can, you can back up to it. Uh, you know, you have to step over the pets and the kids and everything else to get to it just to feed it. It's a great source of heat. You just have to be careful about how, uh, how you maintain it. Mm. And having it swept out is, is really a reasonable thing to have done. You know, we have our house set up where it's downstairs. Mm -hmm. So it heats that area and then it comes up the stairs. Right, I mean, right, heat right. goes up and it's just a wonderful thing. Many houses nowadays are, are designed, especially after about 1970, so that the wood stove actually uses the house as a chimney just as much as the chimney. Now, if the smoke goes up your chimney, but the heat radiates up the open stairway plan into uh, a broader base than you would have, say, if you had a typical ranch or something like that. Well, I thank you so much for coming well, out and sharing that information. Appreciate it. Very knowledgeable. Take care of yourself. And good guy, too, by the way. Here's his number if you want to call him. All right. Now, look at that. You smell that? It smells delicious. Isn't that beautiful? It looks nice, Still too. Still sizzling. I'm going to top that off with some cheese. <laughs> Is that Parmesan? That's a meal in itself. Yeah, yeah just it really that. is. Oh, we still got wow. the sizzle going on. Now see how you've got that little bit of a char that we were trying to get yeah, there? Yeah, I like that. So we're going to scoop this up along with our Yum. other ingredients. I see bacon, all kinds of good stuff. Uh -huh. Now again, this is a perfect side for so many things, especially for wild game. This is a beautiful, wonderful side dish. More cheese? Why not? It's our kitchen. We can do what we right. want. Now look wow. at that. Look how that's, they've tendered up. They've, look, look, see how that's very done now? Yeah. It's got that little char on it. I that's like what that. you want. I'm afraid. Is it hot? Oh, oh wow. Mm. I say it's a side, but I could seriously. Mm -hmm. This could be the main meal. Mm, very good. That's unbelievable. It is. In fact, we have not eaten dinner. This is dinner. Breakfast thing is, this is what I'm going to eat for dinner. I might want to sleep in the other room tonight. Okay. Our half hour is almost up. You know what? We've got eight gazillion recipes out there. And how would you find them, Mrs. Farmer? I would go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. And you do. I do, all the time. We forget how much we yeah. measure. And we want you to be our Facebook friend. Mm -hmm. That's, is it really difficult? You hit like. No. <laughs> so it's, up. it's pretty simple. Hit like. Also hit subscribe on our YouTube page. That way, anytime anything new comes out, you'll be the first to know about it. So, as I'm standing <laughs> here, I'm mouth-watering, looking at this, I guess Ready. I'm just going to have to eat it. But it is all about... Good times. Good friends. I better hurry up and eat. We'll you see you next week. Brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Yum. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.